Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for inviting me to your studio. It's first part of the video. We've got some of your students. And what type of class is this that you're teaching right here? This is a still life class, and it's probably the third session out of six. And we work in layers. We'll paint, then I'll put a layer of, of medium, which is liquid on each layer. And then the next week, after it dries, we start another layer. So this is the third session of painting over different layers and improving the painting each time we go. Excellent. And about how many students do you have in each class? Three to three to five. Um, that's four, four is a good number because we need have time to give everyone their individual attention, which is part of the style of my approach is I give one to one. We all paint, I paint with the class, and then I get up every few minutes and talk to each individual about where they are in their painting, if they have any questions, how to solve certain problems, how to approach um, different um, concepts, etc. Excellent. And I took some video here of your beautiful studio. Uh, I love all the props that are here, and I feel like they really inspire people. Yes, part of the props, which is very interesting, I, we only paint from life. So all these little taxidermy creatures that you're seeing and all these objects you're seeing are subjects for still life. We don't use photographs at all. I believe that painting from life is gives things more depth, more weight, more, more um, feeling of reality and um, it, you're seeing the three dimensions and converting it to two, dimension, to two dimensions in a much more authentic way. I love that, I love that. Yeah, references are important and you have beautiful references here in the studio for people to look at. Yes, and I'm always looking for new stuff. I mean, that's part of the, part of the challenge is finding new subjects for the still lifes new taxidermies that I haven't painted a thousand times or that the students haven't painted before. So That's it's, it's, uh, it's fun. It's, it's, it's so much more fun painting from life because the challenges of lighting it properly and um, seeing things that you don't see from a photograph. I love that. Yeah, the students are really lucky. And how do you decide what subject is going to be painted in each session? I never really know. I try to get something that's a challenging to myself as well as to the class, but I also try to make it instructive, like spheres, rectangles, um, oblong things, um, foreshortening. Uh, everything has a, has a purpose beyond just being a, a still life that's interesting to look at. It's a lesson. Everything is a lesson as well as an interesting painting that I look forward to hanging and hopefully uh, all of us selling our works. I love that. So do I have to come in knowing anything as a oil painting student? Not at all. We take people who have never painted before, don't know what a brush looks like, which end of the brush to hold, how to mix paint, um, and we dive right in. It's not like here's a lesson in mixing. I give them a, a certain palette that to work from. I discuss a little bit how to mix colors if they don't really understand that. If they say I don't see any green, I say we make our own green by mixing the blues and yellows and so on and so forth. And so over the six weeks, which is a two hour session plus two hour, about two hours each session, um, they begin to pick it up on their own. I even, in the first classes, I even give them the brushes to use. And then after the, they've come a couple of weeks to say, now you pick out your own brushes for what you're comfortable with. I love all of your books on your shelf, so people can come in and take a look at these. Yes, and... yes, yes. They're there for any anyone to take a look at, to get out. Sometimes I'll get a book out and show certain artists like Caravaggio or Rembrandt, and uh, those are you're seeing now are books that uh, of my works that are that I tend to give to students, and they're for sale as well. Lovely. Lovely. Okay, so about how many classes a week do you teach here in the studio? Right, right now we have three classes a week. There's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, however, if someone wants to paint and they have two other people to join them, so if there's three people and they want to paint on a Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning, and they can bring a couple of people, I'll create a class around their, their needs and their schedule. That's fantastic. And let's talk just a little bit about how you studied painting. How I studied? Yeah. I studied with Thomas Beekner, who, if, uh, if people are not aware of him, he was the director of the Brooklyn Museum and started the Corning Museum of Glass Collection. And 
had works hanging in the uh, Metropolitan Art Museum and Museum of Modern Art. And I studied with him for 10 years, twice a week for 10 years, and learned this old master's technique that I'm passing along. So essentially, your students are getting uh, this world-class education right here in Elmira, New York. Thank you for that compliment. And I, world class is a world-class technique that I'm still trying to be a world-class painter in. Wonderful. So we see here you really being hands-on with the students and looking over their shoulder and seeing what they're seeing. Right, and, and I, I try to point out what they're, what they're not seeing. Yes, exactly. And, and it really comes down to, you know, the more you see, the my, my little thing is, the more you see, the more you paint. If you can see it, you can paint it. C in capital S-E-E. -E. Mm -hmm. So the more you see, the more you can paint. And I if you can see it, there's no reason you can't paint it. It just takes a little more time to get there. I love that. And now here, this is how I learn uh, um, best, I think, is seeing other people create something in front of me. Yes. So what are you, what are we seeing here? This is another class. Yes, it's a different class. But I, I, and I, and I usually paint with every class along with them. I show them how to start and then I'll sit down and paint along and, and as soon as I get into my own zone I feel it's time to get up and walk around and show everybody or look at everybody's work so I, I tend to paint as much as I can with the class because I, it's how I learn was by watching. Sometimes I would just watch for a half hour uh, when I worked with Tom just how he was doing something and uh, and and sometimes I'll, I'll paint on the students painting themselves as Tom did for me to show you how to do that. Some students don't want you to touch the work and I highly respect that. Others want you, me to show them how to do that. I tell them to hold the brush as you can see me holding it towards the end as opposed to near the near the, the hairs because you get more control that way and work from your shoulders as opposed from your wrists. I mean, there's all different little technique things that over time I explain to them and some of them pick it up and some of them um, I correct. So this is uh, pretty close to the finishing touches, but as you can see as I'm putting out the reflection that comes off the, the wooden box onto the surface, which is a little bit brighter than the surface itself. So it's looking for little nuanced things like that. And one of the things I always tell them is to, you know, they say, well, why do I know when, I'm, when it's done? Well, one, we're, not, we're not out of time, the six weeks are over, but listening to the whispers within your own voice. When you look at the painting and you see something that might trigger, I need to adjust this or fix this, listen to that because right. it's like writing something on water. If you don't pay attention to it, it disappears it very, disappears. very quickly. Right, and so here we see you helping students uh, see what's happening in the setup. Right, I was pointing out the fact that the, the surface of the box is brighter than the side of the box because it's getting most of the light. So make sure you make, make sure that that is lighter than the side of the box. It's just a simple little thing and, and where the highlights hit. It's just whatever she needed in the moment. Sometimes answering questions, sometimes I'm pointing out things I visually see that um, will help them finish their painting and move forward. Beautiful. I'm left-handed, as you can tell by looking at uh, how I point. <laughs> <laughs> Lefties, we have to unite. Yes. And so here are some of the supplies that you have yes. in the studio. Yes, and, and that's another thing. We supply everything, the board, the brushes. You can bring your own brushes if you want. I su we supply the paint, and it's it's professional quality, not student quality paints. So they're, they're all good paint. paint. And I feel like this is such an education that people forget about, like how to set up your studio, right? right. How to pick the products, what brands to lean towards. Right. It's not just sitting and recreating a beautiful still life, it's actually how to set up a studio. Yes, yes. The paint, right. what's going to be most interesting. And, and that's education you can't get online. When you're lear learning from somebody, through a computer, you don't get these same things, these nuances of light, the um, changes in color, you're not gonna see that the yeah. way you see it live. And so forth. Right, so being here in studio is really going to help students um, surpass their own expectations of what they can accomplish. I really believe that. Thank you, and, and what I've found is, it's interesting that um, 
one of the, one of our students or a couple of our students own a local restaurant and they hung their paintings in the restaurant and people couldn't believe it was the first painting they had ever done. Mm -hmm. They were so success, successful at, at doing it. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. So um, we're going to wrap up here. Here's uh, just a few shots of the outside of your art studio here in Elmira, New York. So what's your address? Our address is 166 North Main Street, Elmira, New York. And there's parking along the streets. Or you're not too far from a parking garage. Parking garage as well. is right around the corner if, if needed. Um, typically, there's places on Main Street to park right. without too much difficulty, or across the street near Windsor Park. There's typically places there as well. Mm -hmm. Marks.art. You can sign up for classes on Marks.art. You can pick the day or the, the, the where you, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or so forth. They're, they're also broken up that way. And or, how many people, if I wanted to get a group together, you said this before, a but... A minimum of three people. Okay. Up to, you know, we'll take up to five, but, you know, three is the minimum. Great.